Uh, welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about uh, a lot of other things, but also filmmaking and painting. Our guest today, Sanchita Islam, has produced many films, so many that she can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sanchita, your film, White Wall, uh, what's it about? I know that uh, you probably wrote it and directed it and produced mm. it. Yeah. Right? No, I had a producer. You had, had a, producer. a producer. Okay. Tell us something about the film so that yeah. we can later yeah. we can have a okay. look at some of the footage. Yeah. Well, um, in 2009, I had uh, psychosis. And then in 2010, I had psychosis. Mm -hmm. And then um, I fell pregnant. And then mm -hmm. I got this commission. Mm -hmm. And the film is all about psychosis and about a uh, little girl with mental health problems mm -hmm. who starts running because she doesn't fit in the world mm -hmm. so she starts running until she because she wants to reach the end of the world mm -hmm. she thinks mm -hmm. that if she reach, reaches the end of the world then she will find all the answers that mm -hmm. she's looking mm -hmm. for so it's called white wall because she starts off standing against a white wall and then she ends up at a white wall and the white wall symbolizes god yeah, the horizon or, no, mm -hmm. it's, it symbolizes probably something spiritual, yep, something yep. other, and then and then and then yeah, she gets the answers, and then mm -hmm. she's at peace, mm -hmm. and it's actually quite simple. Mm -hmm. um, it's about getting outside your head mm -hmm. and looking at the world and appreciating those very tiny details, and there's footage in it of that shot on film, mm -hmm. uh, um, shot in Bangladesh, mm -hmm. because my dadu, she has long white hair. And mm -hmm. she looks like an angel, so she's like the spiritual figure yeah. in the film. It's um, it's quite deep. It's my first animation film, and it was a Tehran, Brussels, London production. Mm -hmm. It was very intense. I did all the drawings myself. Mm -hmm. I had to learn very quickly about animation, and we only had three months to make it. Mm -hmm. No concessions, even though I was pregnant and recovering from psychosis. And so I don't, I don't really know how I delivered it. Is it in Bengali or English or subtitles? It's, it's English, it's English, mm -hmm. but it features some footage so mm -hmm. shot in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and how was it received? Yes, it's, it's been sh screened in, in Burma, in, in Bangladesh, uh, in Brussels, in London, in, in oh yeah, all over the place, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's been very well received and mm -hmm. yeah, I'm happy with it. I mean, when I went to film school, I had no clue. I, I was very inspired by people like Sochi Ray and Kurosawa and, you know, Bergman. Yeah. Without realizing it, because Channel 4, they used to have this channel where yeah. they show all these art house films. Without realizing, I'd watched all these films like by Kislowski and, and, and so I had that knowledge. But then they gave me this scholarship of £7,000. I'd come straight from the LSC. Mm -hmm. Alan Fountain, former commissioning editor, on the basis of... Um, this novel that I'd started writing and the basis of the artwork that I created at the LSC, they gave me the scholarship. But obviously the other students were thinking, why the hell did they give it to this, you know? <laughs> she doesn't have a clue. Yeah. So I really, my first film was a complete failure. And, um, but then what that taught... first film? Oh, it was a disaster. I think it had a cow and uh, something. <laughs> it was, we had to make other people's scripts. Yeah. It was a disaster. But then I made a film about a disabled transsexual that I met mm -hmm. on a train called mm -hmm. Katrina Day mm -hmm. and that and then my final film Weak Bladder mm -hmm. which was shot on 16 mil that yes, is a very that interesting topic yeah yeah <laughs> uh, which is about bullying mm -hmm. then that was um, you know that was the turning point and then from then then I was confident then I'm like I know how to make films now and uh, when I went to Bangladesh as well I was very inspired you know I've shot a lot of films in Bangladesh but now I think it's very difficult to make the sort of films that I make because it's, it's a bit like you know you're in the car stop the car get the shot then yeah. people start to mob you get back in the car go you know it's the adrenaline is pumping and you know I, I've been to places and then when I told my parents oh I went to Shadagat you know Shadagat yeah. in Dhaka and I oh my god you Shadagat, went yeah. yes you said you, you went there on your own? Are you crazy? Yeah. You know, I, I had no fear because yeah. I was always chasing the light. People, people living in Gulshan and uh, <laughs> Banani of Dhaka or Baridhara, they don't want to go to Shadagar because it's the old part. 
and they're always scared of uh, yeah. somebody will mug you or something. But those are for me are the That's interesting places. No, no, they are they are dangerous. But I was always chasing the light. When you go to Bangladesh, every street is like a movie. Well, mm -hmm. I I love Bangladesh. I mean, I wasn't born there, but it feels like my ancestral roots are there. My mother left when she was very young, but she never can forget Bangladesh, and it has had the same profound impact on me. But when I go, it's they always say you're a bidashi, and you know because I learned Bangla phonetically. Right. Right here, Sanchita, if we could have uh, uh, some footage of the film White Wall oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for, for the benefit of viewers and they would appreciate your work. Can we have some footage of uh, White Wall? until my feet have bled. I am running, and I don't know why. Can you give me some answers? Please! Why am I sitting here at the end of the world, and I still don't know what to do? So we're born, we grow old, and die. Is that it? Shut 
Abend. comprehend what it means to be alive but there is no point longing for death because death comes to all of us a young man might kiss me on the lips and walk away never to be seen again but the memory of the kiss will stay with me if I let it Oh, great. Uh, your film, Briarwood to Borishal to Brick Lane, uh, I believe, I mean, by the name of it, it looks like it's something about the Bangladeshi diaspora. So. Yes, exactly. So, when yes. was that done and uh, yeah. that, that what was motivated you to do that? See, because there are a lot of other films, like, like this book about uh, uh, Brick Lane by Monica Ali, that had been turned into a film, isn't it? Yes, but my book is, is, is different because my book, it's... Uh, it's about uh, the Bangladesh diaspora in New York and, mm -hmm. and, and London, mm -hmm. and it's looking at the visual parallels. Right. And how when Bangladeshis move into an area, mm -hmm. the, 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 the landscape changes. So right. it's, it's like a blurring of geographical boundaries. So when I was in Briarwood, New York, mm -hmm. I could have been in Bangladesh. When I'm in Brick Lane in London, mm -hmm. I could be, you know, in, in, Many part of in Bangladesh. So when the Bangladeshis move into an area, it changes the colours, the smells, the sounds, and people are drawn to the energy of the Bengali people, yeah. um, just as I am. So that's what I wanted to capture, but also the sense of trying to build something in a country, trying to make a life. So, so yeah, so it's, it's basically, yeah, a story about this, this, this girl who's trying to find where home is, because when she goes to, to Bangladesh, you're a Bideshi, mm -hmm. and when she's in Brick Lane, oh, you're not from Select, you're from, you know, so you're not one of us. So, you know, you're not British, you're not this, you're not this. So what am I? I mean, that's why I'm a nomad, because I have no home. I'm not accepted anywhere, but I'm always trying to find a way to connect. So I connect with my pen. Mm -hmm. So the project I was drawing from, uh, um, sitting on the rooftops and drawing the landscapes of, of London and, and New York and, 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 and um, painting, t no, taking photographs of the landscapes in New York and drawing um, the panoramic views in, in Bangladesh and Calcutta, mm -hmm. Pike Borough, Gulshan, Borishal, um, and, and doing the same in London. Yeah. And then if you juxtapose all these images, there's a blurring of geographical boundaries. You can't actually tell which one is London and which one is Bangladesh. So I found that very interesting. And so that's what, that was the first project I did for the London Arts Board, mm -hmm. which is now the Arts Council. And so that set me on that path to doing these book projects which involved books and film and photography and drawing and painting. That created the, the model. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I kind of was catapulted into the art scene very quickly. As soon as I, did, when I, once I did finished film school and finished working in TV and decided I want to be an artist and got into Chelsea School of Art and Design, very quickly, I started to exhibit and mm -hmm. landed a solo show, and it all started to happen. The, one of the <coughs> first shows that I did was at the Whitechapel group show with the f fellow artists, uh, fellow Asian artists. But um, with art, you need time, you know. You need time. It's like with a painting, it's brush strokes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Now I've done, I don't know, maybe 100 screenings, exhibitions around the world. Uh, there's a book, uh, sorry, sorry, there's another film that I see here, it's Connecting Faith. Yes. What's it about? Yeah, that film was commissioned by my colleague, late colleague, Carl Reuter, who was former British Council Director. So he, um, when I went into his office, I had, I had done a project uh, for the Commonwealth Institute um, 
which was all about Grameen Bank loans and mm -hmm. how these loans impacted on women's lives. So mm -hmm. I'd made a film about these women who'd taken out Grameen Bank loans. Right. So I went in to see him, but I brought the wrong film. I brought from Briarwood to Burchell to Brit Lane. <laughs> he saw that film and he said, I'm going to buy it. This is exactly the sort of thing we need to be you know, doing. Mm -hmm. You come up with an idea and we'll support you. He was such a visionary. Right. People like that don't exist. So I, it just was post 9-11. When I was shooting from Briarwood to Borishaw to Brit Lane, it was in 2001, just three months before 9-11. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was supposed to shoot in September, but I had to shoot three months earlier. That footage, you know, that I got, you, you, you couldn't get it now. And, um, and then 9-11 happened, and then, you know, I wanted to explore Islam. It was mm -hmm. 2003, mm -hmm. and I thought, now, you know, my God, it's difficult to talk about this topic now, it's a hot potato. But <laughs> I looked at three young Muslims, one in London, one in Malaysia, and one in Bangladesh. Right. And they all talked about their faith and how it was important to them. Mm -hmm. But they all had different interpretations of Islam, right. you know. One, the, the, the girl in, in Bangladesh, she said she was Muslim, but she didn't pray mm -hmm. and she didn't really practice, but she saw herself as Muslim. Then, then the other one, he wasn't practicing. He worked at Diesel, he was like cool. And then Malati, she was practicing and she was like, Islam is beautiful, it gives me guidance, it tells me what, is, mm -hmm. what not to do and what to do. So they all had very different <coughs> views <coughs> and I shot the film in Malaysia, Bangladesh and London. But they all have different lives, isn't it? Different lives. But, but, the, but the chap in London, now long beard, very religious, has gone the other way. And, and this is what a lot of my film work was exploring this, because post 9-11, then the disillusionment started to begin with, with the young kids. Because, you know, if they were wearing a hoodie and a rock set, they'd start mm -hmm. getting stopped. Right. This was in 2003, 2004, mm -hmm. when I was making my films. So now we're, we're, we're 2015, and you could see that something was changing within the landscape. You know, my surname is Islam. Mm -hmm. Somebody tweeted me mm -hmm. because, um, and they said, <laughs> I'm not coming to your exhibition, you know, because, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, my surname is Islam, but my exhibition is not to do with religion. I mean, the mm -hmm. level of ignorance. Yes. And so, yeah. Like, uh, like Bernard Christian is not a pope. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, Sanjita, we have to take another commercial yeah. break and when we come back, we will continue with our very, very interesting discussions. I, say, I hope that uh, you're enjoying your time and what we are. hope I'm making sense. Yes, you are. I'm a bit jet lagged. <laughs> well, get over it. Yeah. Uh, thank you for being with us. We are here and we'll come back after the commercial break. Thank you.